Wait, wait, wait. Are bookworms still a thing? Yeah, they're not worms. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're, they're very much a thing. They are very much a thing. They're so and so's. Yeah, they're still very active. Very, very. There's, they love um, anything with gelatin or shellac or so I do a lot of Islamic conservation and they love Islamic because of the gum Arabic and the shellac on lacquer bindings yum. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what I wanted to ask you next and you you sort of uh, uh... Went forward, <laughs> yeah, because uh, Islamic bindings is it's it's a very interesting niche, and uh, uh, well, it's I guess it should be a, a great pleasure to work with them. But how it happened to be that you started to work with uh, specifically in Islamic bindings? It's, it was sort of an accident. Um, so when I was at Roehampton, we studied Islam. We studied the history of the book, and we made every single thing that can be made cuneiform, clay tablets, wax tablets, palm leaf books, the lot. We went right through the history of the book. And we were fortunate enough to have um, Duncan Haldane, who's written a book on Islamic bindings, and he was the head of the Islamic department at the Victoria and Albert Museum. So we, he was our tutor for that thing. So we learned all about Islamic bindings. I'd studied them and made models. And then it just sat dormant. And then I worked with a paper conservator who's a specialist Islamic paper conservator. And I made some boxes for this uh, conservator. And then um, the, her binder that she used died sadly. <laughs> and so there was a, so she said, do you know how to bind in the Islamic style? So. Yes, I, I know certain amount, but that was back in 1998. So I started in 1998 and I'm still learning. I'm still learning all the time. You know, they're, they're very different to Western bindings and the way you approach them is very different. Some things are very similar, but I don't ever make pastiche um, new bindings. I make very plain bindings because it's not my culture. I don't understand it. It's, I'm not going to do the Islamic decoration. It's not my culture. I, I don't feel comfortable with that. So any new binding I do is plain. It still might have an envelope flap. It's still in the correct way. It's bound in the correct way, but it's no decoration or just a gold line or a blind line, something very, very minimal. That's also something that uh, I wanted to talk about because when you, when, when a person browses through your website, uh, there is this pattern of uh, minimalist approach to design that uh, one can uh, see in your bindings, and it's it's so beautiful because with just a small stroke of. Uh, of color or, or of, of, uh, of some different sort of leather or, or with some tooling or something, you make the book absolutely different and unique. And uh, uh, many binders try to, you know, to overcrowd the, the cover with uh, tooling or with uh, some design patterns or something. But with your bindings, it's, it's so simple it's, and straightforward, but then it tells a story. Mm. It, it, it's the way I am. I, I am a minimalist at heart. I'm really interested in art movements such as the modernist movement, Bauhaus. It's that's kind of my aesthetic. I dress very plainly. I my house is quite minimal. There's not a lot of clutter. It's just my aesthetic. It's what I like. I like the architecture of modernism. I love that pure clean line, Scandinavian designs. Danish furniture, all of that. So it, it's naturally in me. But what I do is when I read a book, I'm, I'm a massive, passionate, passionate reader. And I feel so strongly about the books I bind. But I, I have loads of ideas at first. Oh, it could be this, it could be that. And you should, my notebook's full of this, that, references that I write while I'm reading. And I distill and distill, and distill, and distill, and distill, and I, I ends up, I want, my ultimate goal is to achieve the essence of that text with as little as possible as I, as I feel is right. 
but sometimes it might need a bit more. But um, I try to distill it down to the essence. I don't like if it's a book about, you know, I don't know, butterflies, that it's got butterflies on it. That's just never going to happen with my, my work. I really wanted to ask you a bit more about your experience with Islamic books, because Islamic wo uh, world uh, is an awfully big one, bigger than Western world. Islamic books and Islamic book bindings had been made from Malaysia to Uzbekistan to Iran to Syria to Morocco to Spain. Yes. Could you uh, talk a bit about your experience, experience of this variety? Um, well, probably all of that, but I've, <laughs> I've worked on I've worked on them from all over the the world, um, and they're all different. So yeah, a, a Thai Islamic manuscript is very different to an Iranian Persian manuscript. So my training was mostly in the three classic kind of Islamic styles, which is the Ottoman Turks, the Persian Iranians, and the Indian uh, culture of, of, of uh, Islam. So they were the ones I would train trained in, but subsequently I've worked on things from Bhutan, from Malaysia, from Thailand. So the Southeast Asian things are very different to, and then African uh, Islamic bindings are different to, and then Spanish Moorish ones are very different to, they're all different. So you learn all the time. I don't, I don't always know what, there are commonalities that you can re re go to what your knowledge is, they're common themes. But if there's something I'm not sure about what I'm doing, I won't do it. So I, I only do what I feel confident is the right thing to do. So yeah, they're, they're very, very different. Uh, is, is there enough literature on the subject or do you have to contact your colleagues? Are there many of those? And, uh, and what is your research process in general? Because uh, uh, British Empire uh, uh, had, had had a lot of, you know, influence, not influence, influx of knowledge and uh, uh, all the stuff from all, all over the world. Uh, uh, but uh, is it is it an accessible knowledge now? And is it helpful? Um, I think, I mean, I, again, I was really lucky. I have been really lucky to work, say, somewhere like Quaritch. We had an Islamic department. So... And there's nothing like looking at real live material. So I can read, I've got lots of Islamic books on the ones that, the classic books that you read about Islamic bindings. I can read them and they are useful. Petherbridge and um, Bosch, that one I, is an invaluable source. That's a really good source because it covers all of the different cultures. But there's nothing like looking at uh, at the real deal and five of them not just one five of them to say commonalities in a turkish ottoman binding of the 13th century or because of course they even change in centuries and they're they're a nightmare islamic manuscripts because they pillage they pillage all the time so a bind a book a manuscript is very rarely in its original binding they borrow bindings, the binding falls off, they find one that fits, they put them together. They don't even always fit. They're, and then they've got extra bits bolted on that they're, they're real Frankenstein monster sometimes. They're, so it's even hard to judge and date because they've got so many add-ons, so many add-ons. And then you get a Western binder comes in and tries to round and back them and put mull on the back, you know? <laughs> so you, you, you get, it goes crazy it's it's you're just learning on I learn on the job really by looking I haven't because I'm a, I'm a working I'm not a scholar so I haven't got time to sit and read five books on the subject before I start work I'm being paid to start work and and the client might want the book by next week I haven't got time to sit and read five books on the subject so I've got to go on my knowledge Luckily, I've got a lot of knowledge now from 1998 to now. It's, it's quite a lot of years of, of looking at these things. So I do understand a lot, but loads I don't know. Of course not, because it's not my culture. 
But can you just go to, say, VNA or British Library and ask to see those bindings? Because it's very difficult in Moscow. Uh, uh, if the, uh, if uh, uh, the book is older than, say, 150 years, it needs a special permission. You need to write to the director of the library. And if you are not in, uh, uh, don't have a PhD in this subject, you are very unlikely to get access. Is it any di uh, different? Yeah, the but world? you're lucky here because you can. You can have access to things. And because I work with book dealers, um, I have. they let me have access to things. I can look at things. Have you got something I can see? Do you know if, can you have a look inside? Does it have this? Or I can ask questions. Yeah, I'm, it's, we are lucky here. We have a, a lot of access, but I don't have time to go to the v &A for the day anymore. I used to when I studied, but I, I can't do that. That's four hours of my time gone. I can't do that. I can't equate, I can't put that into the cost of my binding repair. So you've just got to get on with it. Well, London and the UK is definitely a center of uh, book arts in many ways. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's an amazing place in, in this way that there are yeah. things I don't li like about London, but uh, this is definitely one of the uh, be better things uh, about yeah, this we're, city. We're incredibly privileged here yeah. and I don't think people always realize how <coughs> what we have access to.